I'm reading from Our Situation Report by Anna Von Reitz on AnnaVonReitz.com, which was published about the beginning of October 2017. Truly understanding where we are requires a knowledge of where we've been in the past, and that's not easy to come by, both because the facts have been obscured by the guilty parties and because most people have not been motivated to learn them. So that we can hit the highlights and get up to speed in the present, part one, we begin, number one, the government of this country is vested in its people. People means militia in Hebrew. There's no doubt that the founders meant for the government to be created and controlled by the same militia men who defended the country then and who defend it now. Number two, the actual government is an unincorporated business known as a body politic. Number three, the name given to this body politic on September 9th, 1776 was the United States of America. This is a total, number four, this is a totally unique unincorporated entity and we hold its Declaration of Independence and its Letters Patent and its sacred name under common law copyright in perpetuity. Number five, the United States of America is not a sovereign nation. It is a consortium known as a union of sovereign nations. Number six, thus, when you look at this country, what you are actually seeing are 50 smaller countries each with their own history, their own geographic boundaries, and their own natural government. In America, the words state and nation are interchangeable. Thus, the Interstate Commerce Clause can also be read as the International Commerce Clause, and Ohio State Bank can also be read as Ohio National Bank. Number seven, for their mutual benefit, these independent small countries banded together and formed the union called the United States of America and they delegated their international jurisdiction, also known as territorial jurisdiction, both on the land, organized as federal postal districts, and on the sea, organized as U.S. districts, to it. Number eight, the unincorporated union of sovereign states called, quote, the United States of America, end quote, holds and exercises all their combined international powers. Number nine, the United States of America then delegated 19 of these international powers to the British-backed United States organization lodged in the District of Columbia. Number 10. Neither of these organizations were incorporated originally. Each had its own population and its own geographical territory. This was the practical, practical result of the Definitive Treaty of Peace, 1783, which describes the two populations as the free, sovereign, and independent people of the United States and the inhabitants, British citizens, who remain behind after the War of Independence to provide essential government services. Number 11. This arrangement resulted in two constitutions, one in 18, 1787 called, quote, the Constitution for the United States of America, end quote, that separated out the international powers of the member states and joined them together on the, under the auspices of the United States of America unincorporated, and another in 1789 called the Constitution of the United States of America, which created the United States entity and its government to exercise the 19 delegated functions. Part 2, A House Divided, number 12. This unsteady dual sovereignty endured until the so-called American Civil War, which was never declared as a war by the United States of America and Congress assembled, and it was never ended by a peace treaty. As such, it was and remains an illegal commercial mercenary action on our shores. Number 13. Following the end of the armed hostilities, a completely new incorporated entity merely calling itself, quote, the United States of America, Incorporated, was launched in 1868. Unlike the actual unincorporated government it was deceptively named after, this was an incorporated entity like any other. The Congress ceased acting in their public office and began functioning as a corporate board of directors. Number 14. The effect of this was glossed over and subtle and hard for people to recognize, but it unlawfully converted our unincorporated government into an incorporated one 
infringed on our copyrights to do it, and substituted a private, mostly foreign-owned corporation in its place. This in turn removed the government from the land jurisdiction and dumped it into the international jurisdiction of the sea. Number 15. At first, this seemed to have little impact because the federal government, quote, and its international functions had always been operated in the international jurisdiction anyway. The switch from public interest to private interest went largely unnoticed, but the pilfering and mischief began, and by 1907, quote, the United States of America, uh, incorporated, was bankrupt. By 1907, quote, the United States of America, end quote, incorporated, was bankrupt. Number 16. Shortly before this, a series of Supreme Court cases known collectively as the Insular Tariff Cases allowed the incorporated municipal United States to expand its franchises into the geographically defined states. So when the United States of America Incorporated went bankrupt in 1907, its functions were immediately picked up by yet another version called lowercase the United States of America Incorporated. Number 17. The second version, another private, mostly foreign-owned governmental services corporation, was bankrupted in its turn, first internationally by treaty among the G5 nations in 1930 at the Geneva Conventions, and then domestically in 1933 by Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Number 18. This left us <clears throat> with two bankrupt foreign federal governmental services corporations, one called, quote, the United States of America, end quote, incorporated, and another called, lowercase, the United States of America, incorporated. And they conveniently named us and our states as the sureties for their debts, so that our land was held as collateral for the debt of the United States of America, incorporated, until that bankruptcy settled in 1953, and our labor and private property was conscripted and held as collateral for the debts of lowercase the United States of America Incorporated until that bankruptcy settled in 1999. Part three, the filthy bastards, number 19. During the bankruptcy of both of these incorporated entities, more fun and games ensued with New incorporated entities that merely moved into town and assumed the vacated service contracts owed to us under the actual Constitution. Enter the United States Incorporated, styled as all capital letters, and USA Incorporated, styled as all capital letters. <clears throat> One being the territorial corporation organized in... Okay, sorry. One, the United States, styled in all capital letters, being a municipal corporation organized in France, and the other, the USA, styled in all capital letters, being a territorial corporation organized in Puerto Rico, and both being foreign to us and to our states and having no proper contract or affiliation with what, us whatsoever. Number 20, the international jurisdiction in the international jurisdiction, it is possible to act as a successor to contract and to assume a contract, so long as nobody objects. And since nobody but the perpetrators of this system knew what was going on at the time, nobody objected. Number 21. Now, as of May 2015, the United States Incorporated, styled in all capital letters, is in Chapter 7 liquidation, and as of this year, 2017, the USA styled in all capital letters is in chapter 11 reorganization. Number 22, it is obvious, it is the obvious plan of the perpetrators to pull the same tricks again and make the clueless Americans pay for it all. As preparation, the United States of America styled in all capital letters was incorporated under the municipal city-state auspices of the United Nations to take over the lucrative lucrative governmental services contracts of the bankrupt United States Incorporated styled in all capital letters and a new territorial entity calling itself Republic United States has been formed as a Nevada corporation 
Still more contenders have been formed offshore, including a new thing out of Costa Rica calling itself the United States of America, styled as upper and lower case letters, incorporated again. And the Unity States of America incorporated, styled in upper and lower case, and so on. Number 23, during this time period, American babies were seized upon as chattel backing the debts of these corporations under conditions of non-disclosure and deceit and deliberately misidentified as the progeny of unwed mothers surrenders as wards of the incorporated states. <clears throat> their worldly goods, the copyrights to their names, their land, their homes, their bodies, and even their souls were securitized and traded as assets and were presumed to be donated to benefit the incorporated states of states while they themselves were deemed to be paupers and incompetents and slaves owned by these respective commercial corporations. 24. These gross criminal acts of personage and baratry against innocent civilian populations, fraud and breach of trust with respect to international treaties, violation of commercial contracts, institutionalized identity theft, unlawful conversion, acts of inland piracy against their employers, press ganging, kidnapping, enslavement, and other crimes perpetrated against the American states and people have provided a vast and insurmountable public record of infamy and led to the demand that these corporations be liquidated as crime syndicate, syndicates operating on our shores. Number 25. We note that these activities continued on despite objection, objection and evidence and regardless of which political party was in power. They continued even after they were prosecuted and given notice under international law. Many of these crimes have been internationally outlawed for centuries <clears throat> and some are capital level war crime offenses. These crimes have been committed against Americans at home and at the same time the same perpetrators have committed these and similar crimes in our names while claiming to represent us abroad. Part 5. We wake up and return home. Number 26. In 1998, things conspired so that some Americans woke up. Commander Russell Gould seized the Title IV flag abandoned in the wreckage of the bankruptcy settlement of the United States of America Incorporated, styled in upper and lower case, and re-entered it in the United Nations. He also reopened the actual post office in Philadelphia. Meanwhile, my husband and I served notice to the governors of the states of states and the Internal Revenue Service and the Queen and the Pope objecting to the fraud and criminality and breach of trust involved in all of this. Number 27. For the next 10 years, we privately pursued due process and continued to give notice to all parties concerned and conducted the necessary research and discovery to determine and demonstrate both breach of trust and violation of commercial contract with respect to us and our states of the union. In 2000, number 28, in 2008, our complaints were heard by the Vatican Chancery Court and a determination made by Benedict the 14th, 16th, in our favor and efforts to remedy began, including a final order defining once and for all the naming conventions and tax statuses of all the quote named vessels involved in this chicanery. Number 29. By 2011, we had reopened our federal postal district courts and began the final series of due process presentations throughout the land jurisdiction occupied by our sovereign unincorporated states. Number 30. In April of 2014, we issued final judgment of breach of trust and violation of commercial contract. We gave international notice and due process to all principal parties and many, many agents and agencies. <clears throat> Number 31, on November 4th, 2015, we issued new sovereign letters patent, and on November 6, 2015, inclusive sovereign letters patent and a joint declaration of sovereignty together with the American Athabascan and Lakota Sioux Nations. By doing so, we preserved our actual constitution and chose new federal partners indigenous to this country. This was again given full due process and international notice. Number 32, 
We solicited and processed claimants from all 50 land jurisdiction states competent to inherit the land as heirs and as representatives of the people, jural assembly members, and members of their respective state militias going back before the so-called Civil War and most before the War of Independence. These Americans also signed paperwork making their political status explicit and placed it on the public record so that there can be no doubt that all 50 land jurisdiction states are occupied and possessed by lawful heirs. Number 33, on January 6, 2017, we issued a series of private sovereign indemnity bonds securing the claims of the American states and people as priority creditors and paramount security interest holders against the United States, styled in all capital letters, and all of its various franchises, including the States of States, styled in all capital letters, and also against the USA, styled in all capital letters, USA Inc., and its franchises, including the States of States, styled as upper and lowercase states. Number 34. Also on January 6, 2017, we issued a payment bond and lodged it with the Vatican Chancery Court, which is the bank for the Holy See, and redeemed all the named and named entities worldwide. Number 35. We, the American states and people, are the priority creditors and paramount security interest holders of all municipal governments and all territorial governments and all the various corporations formed under the auspices of these governments worldwide. Part 5. A Brief Practical Explanation of the Circumstance Number 36. Two dreadful wars had left the entire earth suffering and demolished. In 1945, simply cleaning up the wreckage seemed an insurmountable task and unbearable expense for most of Europe and much of the Far East. Number 37. The U.S. Army never stood down and the American states and people were presumed upon and never allowed to return to peacetime status. Our factories were never retooled. Our taxes were never relieved. Our entire country and its resources were pushed to the uttermost for decades after 1945 to rebuild and finance the rebuilding of the entire world. Number 38. This is why we have been worked like the animals and enslaved and imposed upon for 80 years to rebuild after the world wars. 39. Now when it comes time to pay us back, the actual debtors, all the foreign countries of Europe and around the world, can't afford to pay us back. The debts are astronomical in the quadrillions of dollars. Number 40. So all these incorporated municipal and territorial franchise governments doing business as, for example, Japan, styled in all capital letters, and Japan styled upper, in, in upper and lower case, have all quietly by treaty again declared bankruptcy to discharge all this accumulated debt. Number 41. That is fine enough. We are wise enough to know about blood and turnips, and we didn't rebuild the world to lord it over our neighbors or destroy it again with another stupid war over money. However, there are some issues that cannot and will not be ignored. Number 42. The perpetrators of these plans and circumstances set it up so that we have not been represented. represented. We, the priority creditors and paramount security interest holders, have been studiously left in the dark with the expectation that we would not step forward and tell the world these facts, which would then allow the international banks to act as secondary creditors and claimed our assets as abandoned property. Number 43. It isn't bad enough that everyone involved planned with malice aforethought to borrow all this money and labor and resources from us and then claim bankruptcy. But they further plan to make false claims on abandonment and steal everything that belongs to us naturally, adding an insurmountable insult to an already ripened injury. Number 44. So as we take our rightful, rightful place as the lawful and only true and actual government left standing, and settle our claim as the priority creditors and paramount security interest holders of virtually every government and every incorporated business on this planet, we have this to say. It's our right and obligation to do justice and grant mercy, to live up to the best that America can be, and to turn our backs on what has, it has been misrepresented to be. 
but our assets are ours and they are not abandoned. Number 45. Finally, we say this system is at an end. We have published our conditional acceptance and told both the United States of America, styled in all capital letters, and the Republic United States, styled in upper and lower case, and all the other wannabe successors to contracts, thanks but no thanks. Any services we receive, we receive on a limited and transitional month-by-month -month basis, and we allow no assumption of contract beyond that. We have made our arrangements and we are conducting our own business, restoring the lawful government and the public law pending action to call a Continental Congress into session. Part 6. America's Hereditary Head of State Number 46. In 1087 AD, William of Normandy died and made his senior nobles relatives of his from Normandy who made the Norman conquest possible, free sovereigns in their own right in England. This is known as the settlement of the Norman conquest. The Belchers, Anglicized to Belcher, were among these so honored, those so honored. Number 47, a little more than a hundred years later, they were among those who created and enforced the Magna Carta. Number 48, by 1609, they were among the first men to enter, enter Boston Harbor and begin building the city. Number 49. By 1776, they were lawyers and neighbors of John Adams in Braintree, Massachusetts. Number 50. They were also officers in the Continental Army. William Belcher was a colonel who fought in the Battle of White Plains and other engagements. He was also a free sovereign in England, having elder title and outranking King George. Number 51. When the United States of America unincorporated was formed to hold all the powers of the individual states in international jurisdiction and subsequently to delegate some of those powers to the United States there had been there had to be a head of state to hold and exercise the reserved powers those powers in international jurisdiction that were retained by the American states and people and not delegated away number 52 the head of state had to be a sovereign in his own right and hopefully someone who understood and supported the American vision. William Belcher was put forward by John Adams as a solution to the problem and his family coat of arms was thus employed to create both the Great Seal of the United States of America and the Great Seal of the United States. Number 53. Every American ship and vessel in trade or commerce that has set sail on the high seas and navigable inland waterways since then has operated under his sovereignty and his seal. 54. James Clinton Bel Belcher is the lawful heir and progeny of William Belcher and right wise enabled to wield the great seal in whatever capacity and manner he chooses in international jurisdiction. Number 55. Though an artist by trade and fully loathing politics of all kinds, he has stepped forward in this hour of need to exercise these powers vested in him as the lawful head of state owed to this country, and has brought forward the claims of the American states and people as the priority creditors and paramount security interest holders in the worldwide bankruptcy, and he has also provided for their defense against false claims of abandonment and provided evidence that their land and homes, businesses and bodies are not chattel and not voluntarily standing as sureties for the debts of United States, Inc styled in all capital letters, and USA Inc. styled in all capital letters, which have abused their employers and benefactors, trespassed and infringed upon our copyrights, plundered our national trust, and done so under conditions of fraud and deceit. Number 56. By posting the private registered indemnity bonds covering all the actual states and people, and by posting the payment bond redeeming all the names and names of these vessels, we have completed everything necessary to reclaim and release the assets, set aside the debts, and restore lawful government to the entire world. Number 57. We have also rebutted all claims that we voluntarily abandoned, declaim, abandoned declaimed, or traded away our birthrights for petty considerations. The governments of the world for the past 150 years have been run as crime syndicates with all the terrible terrible results we see now we now see but we have the opportunities opportunity as the priority creditors and paramount security interest holders to put an end to the evil 
that has been and give birth to the good that can be. Please share this information far and wide and let it be passed on and passed out and understood by everyone in every corner and nation. Anna Maria Reitzinger, fiduciary, James Clinton Belcher, head of state. See this article and over 700 others on on his website, AnnaVonWrites.com, spelled A-N-N-A-V-O-N-R-E-I-T-Z.com.